Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening wherever you are in the globe. This is your darling program, The Comrade and Friends. And today we shall be talking about something very important with Edo State in focus. Edo State 2024. Governorship. Oba of Benin rejects non-performance. Child's SY Minister claim Agba. Do not touch that die. Join us. We shall be starting shortly. Comrade Show Way. Comrade Lamte Oriya. This is the Comrade Show. This is the Comrade Show. For his love for this state, and this state, and your love for our country, Nigeria. Her Majesty recalled that in 2016, Edo State had only one uh, minister in the cabinet of the immediate past uh, president of Nigeria. But in 2019, His Majesty wrote to Mr. President to consider and let Edo have two ministers. I became a beneficiary of that prayer. <laughs> And uh, happened to have uh, become the first minister to come from the Donald since 1999. So I've come to thank His Majesty for that uh, privilege of the prayers to Mr. President, for which I'm a beneficiary. So, having done my job for three and a half years, and I've successfully completed it. I thought it wise to come back to His Majesty and thank you for your prayers, for your support, and the advice that I got throughout this three and a half years I was a Minister of State for Budget and National Plan. Your Majesty, I also want to congratulate you on the Gazette and of the artifacts that the immediate past president signed. That the artifacts belong to the palace. As a follow up to that, I have discussions with the Director General of the Museum and Monuments Commission. And I have uh, made a provision of 1.9 billion in the 2023 budget for, in my understanding, the Royal Museum. However, I have found some foul play from within the, the Commission. Once again, thank you very much, uh, your, your Majesty. As uh, the future becomes, I pray for your blessings, that God guides my thoughts, and God blesses my aspirations, and God guides my ways. Thank you very much, your Majesty. For his love. Thank you so much, my people. That's great. That set the barometer for our discussion today. I'm not alone this 24th day of June 2023 to do this by myself. I have the scenes in the house, no other but Komilanti Ponsarehi. Komilanti, what we have on show today is very great. But I want you to welcome the people before we start. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade from Mrs. Austin. Yes, Nigerians, greetings to you all, a dusty people. Greetings to you all if you are joining us in the Comrade show. Uh, yes, don't go away, stay with us. Stay with us. Um, the window is open and um, a lot of interesting things are ahead. Interesting times we are in. Uh, definitely, uh, we are not going to stay on the fence. We are going to be very much involved. And uh, just like uh, we've always done, <laughs> um, follow the Comrade Show, uh, subscribe to the Comrade Show. You'll get loads and loads of updates. Over to you, pharmacists. Thank you so much, Comrade Lamte. You are looking a bit different today. I thought your kaki followed the era of Oshomole, but I can see that you are also following Joe and Jero. NLC must continue. We know that they are in discussion at the moment with the federal government. Nobody knows what a Jero will be, but time indeed will tell. But I like your kaki. So our viewers, friends of the Comrade Show, today we are going to zero in on a do state in focus. And uh, lest I forget also to let our viewers know that we are keeping a very good eye at the national level we are keeping a very good eye at the uh, tribunal. Um, Labour Party, PDP, and APC, are, like you know, are in court. 
and we are monitoring situation. But in order not to be subjudiced at this moment, we are keeping a tab, and in due time, we are going to really discuss what is happening there. But we know for sure that the mandate, when it comes, will definitely be reclaimed. As it's always said in local palace, na time it go take, stammer I go call him papa name. So all obedient all over the world, please remain focused, remain resolute, remain prayerful, and remain fortified. The mandate indeed will be claimed. That's that for the national level. But today, given the fact that um, in a few months' time, many states in Nigeria will be having gubernatorial elections, and a those states is not left out. By my calculation, 16 months from now, we shall have a new governor in the Sado to take over the mantle of leadership from the present governor, Godwin Obateki. And November is the time. From now to November is 16 months. In another two to three or four months, we shall be knowing who will become candidates and flag bearers of the different political party. So you agree with me that things are indeed eating up. And today, Comrade Show have decided to talk about a dusty governorship that is coming in 2024 and to help us set an agenda and a barometer for what Edo people, home and abroad, should be looking for to guide us in choosing somebody, voting, electing somebody that will pilot the affairs of Edo State from 2024 for the next four years and give Edo State another lease of life because we remain the credo, the only city, the credo of black civilization. The city where the Portuguese first came and they met traffic lights. We must not go backward. We must go forward. And that is very important. It's on that note that we are zeroing on the recent visit by the SY minister, Clem Agba, to the great place, the palace of the Oba of Benin. And you agree with me that Oba of Benin is playing a very important role. We know him as a leader, destined to lead us and lead us well. But he has taken this to another level. He has again, on many occasions, like he's done before, Spoken truth to power, and I think indeed that is very key. Uh, Comrade Pamosa Araki, you saw the minister Clem Agba looking very radiant and done in white and paid a visit to the palace of the Oba of Benin. Yes. But I trust my Oba, a man that is gifted with wisdom, education to the highest level, and I think he really, really, really said the truth. And this is what we want to discuss today. They are coming and they are coming in their droves. But the those state and the people, led by our own Oba, is telling them the truth. What is your take? Well, I think before we start, uh, uh, I'm laughing because I have uh, watched everything. In fact, I've watched it over and over and over again. I, I, was, I wasn't actually listening to Clem Agba uh, with the you know multitude of lies, I would say, that he packaged to present to the Oba of Benin. I, I actually was, you know... Uh, listening to the Oba of Benin. And I wasn't just, at some point, I wasn't just listening to the voice of the Oba. I was trying to listen to the unspoken words of the Oba of Benin. Because the, the words of the Oba, the, the His Royal Majesty, they, they appear, but he didn't even say it. He did say that uh, he's going to leave some things out. So I was trying to imagine how much of what he actually left out as a leader. Because probably some of those things, if he had just said everything, probably, you know, Clemagma would have been in prison by now or being chased around or something and all of that. So I try to listen to the unspoken words of Yoba of the name. And um, I think that's going to form, you know, the basis of my own contribution towards this particular birthday. But let me take a listen to His Royal Majesty. Uh, <laughs> Let's take a listen. His response to Clemagba is very important. Please, this is the common show. Thank you, Lord Almighty. We thank our ancestors for your successful completion of your, of your office in tenure as Minister of State. We thank Lord Almighty for that. We thank our ancestors. I think throughout your tenure, this was really, I don't remember if, if we actually 
saw you more than twice. Maybe the first time you came, when the company about the floor, the drama the floor was like that. And, uh, and now you have a completion. And uh, in between, I've been sending messages to to someone there that the uh, certain observations I want to make. Uh, I will try. I will try to to keep some. That's all the. You mentioned certain things. I'm constrained to speak to them. We interrupted once in a while. Yeah. You know, I, I, 
Go ahead, sir. I, I think this Oba is a proper deity. He is full of wisdom yeah. to the Frank. He sent that message to Clemagba in a very, very different, superlatively presented. And I think this will set a barometer and a template for any future person coming to see the king. And to ask for blessings because I don't think Clem Agba ever expected this. And I, 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 I think three things I want to draw out of that, and I want to use one word to, to capture it. It's all about empathy. There were three important things. One, when something is done for you, it's good to show appreciation. So it is clear that even when the letter was written by the Oba, he never heard or saw him. He only came around during the flood time. Yeah. And this is making the tour time. So yes. which means appreciation is very important in life. Yes. Even in the simple yes. things that we do. Yes. And the other also zero down on beneficiary. If he yes. first asked who benefited personally. Yes. And even the entourage of the SY minister. We are not bold enough yes. to, to stand up to say they did yes. benefited. Mm -hmm. He even went ahead to call a notable person in that group who happened to be uh, from my from my from my old boy of my secondary school i'm talking of the esok bar of benin yeah. who has all who midwife is coming and yes. then i don't know if the esok bar was present but he couldn't answer to the affirmative and yes. then he also somebody was trying to say that he benefited as well but when the question was posed to him he chicken out yeah. and the other did not just say anything about persona he also asked for beneficiaries for areas so mm -hmm. I, I think Clemagba would have, in fact, the video did not show his face. But I think what he got was not what he was expecting. The but what is important for Benamte, what is important is what Ogidiga himself has done. And I think this is really baited with wisdom. Yes. And our forefathers and the gods are indeed with him. Long may he live, long may he reign to see the truth. Anybody that will go to the top of will be prepared. So, Commandante, take it from there. I know you have a lot to say. I, no, 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 you see, my brother, we, we've, we've been on this road for a long time. And the issue of our polity, the issue of what we get from the people we entrust with the resources of our land, okay, it, you know, has been has been a, a long time matter of discourse. You understand what I'm saying, uh, you know, and all of that. And, and I think that beyond what, I mean, the, 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 the face value of it, I think that this meeting, you know, uh, that Clement Agba had with His Royal Majesty, I think it is quite significant. It is significant because it's, it's, it creates room for everybody in this political season to look at themselves before they go seek the royal blessings for their aspirations. Now, let's not forget, you know, you, earlier you were, you were praising, you know, His Royal Majesty for the way he, you know, uh, presented this whole, you know, package to make, I'm sure, uh, Clement Agba would have, you know, peed on, his, on himself. He would have cringed beyond, you know, anything because what he got from the palace is never what he expected. Now, I, I, and I think this is so important because if, if Clemagna knew that this is what actually awaited him, he would not have paid, carried this visit to the palace of the Obabili. Absolutely, you know, not to even talk of, you know, well, there's a, a second part of the video we are going to we are, we are going to listen to, we are going to watch where he because Clemagna laid the foundation of his aspirations, you understand, for which he actually came to the palace to seek, uh, you know, uh, the blessings of uh, his royal majesty. Now, with all of these, I can tell you almost for sure that Clem Agba's political career is almost as good as done. Clem Agba's political career is almost as good as done because he came here, because he, everybody who's going to grow for government, government in those states will come to the palace of Yabba Bene, particularly the, the, the serious candidates and all of that. And if you get some blessed out of, blessed out of the palace of Yabba Bene, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's quite a good point to start. 
You understand? But what has happened is that Clemagma, okay, came to the palace, and of course, his resort sheet as Minister of State was read to him. And I think that this is significant. Everybody's resort sheet should be read to them. It is actually a base where I want to anchor my discourse to say that looking at 2024 and beyond, okay, if people have not proven beyond reasonable doubt that they have delivered, whether in the private sector or in the public sector or whatever, if they do not have a report card to show, a report card of commitment, a report card of performance, a report card of integrity, they should not try to aspire to the highest office in the land. People must have a track record that we can, you know, we can talk about, we can, you know, allude to. In this case, Clemens, Clemens Agba from a do state and do not, being a minister for all these years, had nothing whatsoever to show to say, man, this is a report card from Agba. In a do state today, they, I mean, there have been series of clashes between a do state indigenous, some people, you know, uh, questioning the state government. Or even the federal roles in those states, issues between the state government and the people of those states, on federal roles in those states, and there's been no comment from anybody in, in the Federation of Nigeria. There's been no from any minister, from any senator concerning those roles. Bini Auti Road is a federal road. So when the other talked about we're benefiting more, it you know it, it, the other really even said it at the end of the day, it was not really. It was very, uh, it was very symbolic. It was not really about the palace chiefs. It was actually about the people of those states who can come out now to say, "I benefited either individually or I benefited because of the roads that Clement Agba, you know, engineer that the those states, you know, uh, vehicles, you know, uh, in applying, or we benefited because of the the the, the housing project." Clement Agba, as a minister, put in a dose that those people are enjoying. Or well, we benefited from one project or the other. You understand what I'm saying now? That can act back, you know, people can say, safely say that this was a project engineered by a federal minister, for that matter. And yet, Clem Agba owned up to the fact that that the dose state under Buhari had two ministers under Buhari was because of prayer answer. The prayer prayed by the above beneath to say, President Mohamed Bouhari, give us more ministers. And we had two ministers, and Clementba was the beneficiary of that minister. Now, I think what this does is about beneath, you know, carefully presented the report card to Clem Agma to say, This is your report card. Okay? And at those people are aware of your report card. So it is not me who is speaking. If anybody here is a, you know, is a beneficiary of your of what you benefited from as a minister, let them speak. I probably would have expected that by now some people would have made videos that were not in the parlor to say, I am an Edo State indigenous. By virtue of the fact that Clem Agba was minister, okay, my children are enjoying some scholarships from the office of the Minister of uh, you know, uh, Budget and, uh, and Planning. I am from Edo State. Uh, because of Clemagma, this and this and this projects have been started in my own village, in my own town, and every other thing. So if we do not have a report like that, now what that means is that it becomes very challenging for us to think, looking at the radar, to think that someone like Clement Agba qualifies at all to hold any public office representing a those state, talk less of holding the position of the government of a those state. And that brings me to one point. We have regularly had people that have served in government. They aspire to higher positions, even though they do, they do not have any proper result to show for you know the previous positions they've had. Clem Agba was 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 a commissioner for environment in Edo State, and the Oba made reference to some very dirty things you know attached to his name, even as commissioner for environment. Let us take a listen more at that. They will come back and finish the analysis on this matter. It's very, very important because this is highly symbolic. We're laying a foundation for the future, a foundation for 2024, because there are so many of them right now that are already preparing, warming up 
to take over from Governor Boni Obaseki, but we need to really, really, really scrutinize absolutely and lay, absolutely. And lay criteria for anyone to say they want to aspire to become governor of Edo State. Our stake is intact. And thank God that the above the name is Royal Majesty, long be him live for about talk bay. It's already the foundation for how this should be. Let's take a listen to the rest part of the matter. Please, uh, please, that, uh, that is bothering me about your presentation, but the presentation you make, that is the matter of the 1.9 billion which uh, put it in the budget. True, 1.9 billion we put in the budget. But you know, I interacted with you on that matter. When I saw the budget statement, I was worried. Remember, I was worried. And I, and I drew your attention to something in the budget statement that, yeah, there is a, there is a one, there's a, a night time I see there of one point nine billion put in the budget for ICMA. But Bini Royal Museum was not mentioned in it. And, uh, your explanation was uh, the DG, the DG was coming to you and was telling you that he had to walk in those little pain. But you know, those little pain. I was not I was not so happy about it because you know I'm so you know if you if you are if, if you know me very well I, I like truth, the truth. That one will not be the one if anybody here. You also saw the budget statement. I saw it. There was no mention of the new rabbi in it. It may not say there's some foul play in the CMA. Say there was some foul play. So everybody's here. I don't know the foul play. I don't know. I don't know the foul play. And you are leaving it to me now to go and find out. That's not, a, not fair. You are the one that only found the day in the SEMA man. We really don't. But if it was stated categorically from the very beginning, this 1.9 billion is for Benin Royal Museum uh, storage facility in Benin. But to be kept either in the account of SEMA or so because we do, we are trying to work out the ma management agreement, management agreement with NCMM anyway, for them to manage these, uh, these artifacts for, on behalf of the palace and so on and so forth. They are still working on it. So there will be no deal. But um, so I was, I was, so as I kept calling him, I was a little worried. I don't watch social media. I don't have time. I don't have time. Once in a while, something will appear. Somebody is not close to me. They want me to see this. They want me to see this that you were under pressure to run for governorship. You were under pressure to run for governorship. So I was surprised. And then. Uh, they sent me another social media uh, video clip. The boy was so near. When you were commissioner for the environment, and your boys were scattering everybody's uh, tables and everything, why you, why you, are you are being quiet? Won't you? You should do us, you should do for the damage control. You have your boys now, if you, you have your boys, you should also. You also do your own counter, and uh, it's, it's the name of the game, as they say. It's the name of the game. The politics is here. Oh, talk yeah. <laughs> But I didn't like that. I didn't think it was very good publicity for you. If, for somebody who wants to be talking on this case, and they are, they are rubbishing you like that, and you can't keep quiet. So that's my own advice to you. 
Listen, uh, uh, to be frank, if Clem Agba has got any desire, any hope, any interest to become something in a do state, I would advise him to just forget about it and it's a, concentrate, it's a, it's concentrate a, mission, a mission dead on arrival. And concentrate on a lot of things. To be frank, um, CNC, I, I think a do state. And the entire Edo state and its people, I think we are lucky to have this Ogidiga sitting as our Oba. Lante, apart from wisdom, our Oba is highly educated. And what he brought out shows that he wasn't told, he did due diligence to read that budget. Yes. And what he brought out were very, very salient. Yes. And I want to talk about three things before I allow you to speak. It was very clear that the budget, in that budget, certain things were not exclusively mentioned. And that the Bini Royal Museum was not mentioned as allegedly claimed by Claim Agba. Who lied? He lied for anyway. Yes, with a view, with a view to Korean favor. Then secondly, the Oba of Benin expressed disappointment to say that Clemagba did not lie. Clemagba lied using his own name, yes. which was not very important because he was not aware. Yes. And he gave a narration about the DG of budget and planning and all that discussion as if His Royal Majesty had an inclination of what was going on. Yes. And His Majesty used the opportunity to, to let the people know, in, indeed, the entire world and Nigerians, that it was not part of it. How can it be the Oba of Benin? And we are talking of a museum under its jurisdiction, and it's just hearing many after. It didn't sound well. Then the Oba of Benin now said the last one, which I think is very important. In fact, two more. It appears that Clemagba also came to the palace to now send the, the respected and revered Oba of Bini a message. I have told you now, you go and be fighting. I think that is that appears very, very rude. And um, it shows that humility is far lacking. But the Oba of Bini in his wisdom also said that there was a video that came out rubbishing Clemagba. But I is disappointed that even after that video came out, Clemagba has not come up to say it's a lie and put his name and clean his name, clean his name or say I didn't do it. So, to be frank, everybody that will come after this will be very, very scared. They should, they should do their job very well. Thank you so Thank you so much for what you are doing for us. This visit was an expose yes. to be forewarned and to be guided. Comelante, I am indeed very, very happy. I have always been very happy as an Edo man and growing in Benin. Yes. But with the display of His Royal Majesty following this visit, I think the hope of prosperity, of it's growth, a it's a of tourism is again brought to the fore. And I also think, as people will say, that Clemagba might just be backed up by the former governor of Edo State, Adams Oshomole. Indeed, time will tell. But I think uh, Clemagba should just jettison his ambition. Well, uh, I, I think uh, where, where, for Clem, where he knows what he wants to do, uh, but I can tell you that a lot of damage is already done. You know, he came to the palace to lie. And uh, Omonobane do 
is is an Oba who never takes kindly to lies. Uh, and he's always been a preacher of if you are given the opportunity by your people, give back to your people. And in this case, it's evident that Clement Agba has not given back to the people of Edo State. And that itself is a shame. And Clement Agba is just an example amongst numerous others who have had the opportunity you know, to uh, serve the people, not just of Edo State extraction, but even other, other parts. And the spirit of actually serving for the glory of service is hugely lacking in Nigeria. Otherwise, you one would have expected that as a minister, having served these years under President Mohamed Buhari, has impacted, if not the entire Edo State, his own constituency, the Edo North. So much so that when it comes like this, or when he even says that he's coming to visit the above Benin, I mean, there is a way you will perform as a son of the land, my brother. In your political office, when you are you you write to say you want to come and visit an Oba of Benin like this, okay, the way you will be received first and foremost will tell you that you are a worthy son of the land. I mean, the, the Oba, the, I mean, great sons of Edo state are. Uh, we see the way the Oba of Benin receives great sons of Edo states, sons that have distinguished themselves, okay, as you know, people's people. When they are come to visit the Oba of Benin, their reception is usually different because the Oba is proud of a Do State sons that are doing well and helping the growth of a Do State because it's, it's, it's part of the the the, the, the adage in, in Benin, you know, no go back dole do ye or bagualo. That who will join the Oba to fix a Do State, and that was what was very significant when Oba started talking about did you benefit? Did you benefit? Oh, the road, Beni Aoti Road, for instance, are we benefiting from that? Because these are clear resort sheets. Because if you, if you as a minister has tried to influence the project of fixing Beni Aoti Road, and the whole world is aware that this thing is coming from your influence as minister, you know, as a, a minister of state for, you know, budget and, and planning and every other thing, everybody is aware, that would be huge benefit to a state people. That even in this discourse, Oba would be able to even refer to it is that we are proud of you, sort of a just state, because we are we understand that you influence this, you influence that, and you know what he tried to do, which equally annoyed me, and I'm sure the Oba picked it when he said that you know he spoke with the budget planning, whatever, whatever, and he make sure that they, you know they approve one one point nine billion for the project for what he understands uh, for Benin Royal Museum. Uh, but he later found out that some people right there were playing some foul play. Those of us in those states who knows a lot of antecedents for this uh, artifact matter, we know the game he was trying to play. And the other was very direct. He said, you are giving me, are you giving me an assignment to go and find out the foul play? I don't know the foul play you are talking about. The thing you say you influence 1.9 billion. How is it true? Because I did not see a budget that read that for Benin Royal Museum, 1.9 billion is approved. That would have zeroed 1.9 billion to somewhere. How can you just say put 1.9 billion, you know, uh, very ambiguous? You understand know, what I'm saying now? Nobody really can tell where 1.9 billion and you are coming to the palace to come and lie. Only. I mean, I think, I, think, I, I think that is really, really, really low. For me, this Clement Bafima, you know, uh, for me has lost every iota of what should be respect because of the office he had. And I, I think that he should, he should go to his house and bury himself in shame. You understand what I'm saying? Now? And it should be a clear warning to every politician trying to seek political office in those states. You understand what I'm saying? Now? To show their report cards because whether we like it or not, the Palace of the Oba of Benin, you know, has a report card of everybody. And that brings me to one point. And I think that for now, it's for particular for the governance of the Do State 2024, I think but for the for the you know established politicians that we are hearing their names fly here and there. For me, I don't think any of them is even worth it. I probably think that 
we need to look beyond these established politicians, even with all the the monies they stolen from our or from our, our patrimonies that they want to use to come and fight, you know, to you know what I'm saying. I think we should we, we are going to start to resist most of these people and of course say who qualifies until we should have a criteria. I, I know that you have some list of criteria that you know we need to you know look into as far as a do twenty twenty four is concerned. That would be my take just now, my brother. But yeah, ta, 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 I I so to, to, not do our talk, but it's a uh, Thank you so much, Comrade Lamte. I think uh, we will not dwell so much on this. We've talked a bit about it. I think the discussions and the submissions by His Royal Majesty is very apt on this matter. And I think he has not only settled Clemagba and his ambition, he has also settled the likes of Clemagba and their ambition. If they would ever come to the palace, they should be rest assured that the palace will speak truth to power. We say it as it is. And I must commend Omono, Omono Banedo for that. I am I was absolutely overjoyed when I saw that video. I'm playing it again, like we said, rekindled hope. But Comrade Lamte, just we're going to spend the last few minutes or the last part of today's program to look at the do state in focus. We all know that um, part of the visit of Clemagba was to lay a foundation for the governorship election coming up next year in Edo State. November 2024, when I burn or break, we shall have a new governor in the Sado. And the elections, if my memory serves me right, will be sometimes in September. And hopefully by December this year, November, December this year, we should know the candidates that will be flag bearers of the different political parties. Komilante, you agree with me that Edo State is very diverse. A state in microcosm of Nigeria with languages more than 30 languages that are spoken in a state. Many people indeed may not know. But just like we did two years before the emergence of Peter Gregory Obi, Comrade Show has always pioneered this, and I think this is fitting and the right time for us to talk about it. We want to lay a foundation and as well create a template that we should look at when picking, selecting, or voting. For who becomes the governor of a do state in 2024 and then um, there are a few blocks i want us to talk about we have partially talked about one which is talking about performance and um, Lante, you agree with me that performance is very key i know when we say performance we look more about people in government but performance even in the little things that you have done because if you've done it before you will do it again so one of the blocks, I believe this video will be used as a reference point when the time comes. Comrade Show have always led the way in many things. So performance, what, what, what's your take as per performance? Do you, what, what's your take as per performance for the governor who becomes governor of Edo State in 2024 after Governor Baseki? In my view, I think it's very important. We shall mark them on what they've done before. But put your mouth to it. And honestly, you know, it, it, it should be the basis of you know, of most of what is going to happen. Um, uh, there, there must be some track record of, you know, of, of performance, of, of service. You know, I always anchor on the word service for the glory of service. You know, and I think, again, we need to question what, you know, uh, people who are aspiring for public offices, what do you understand about their aspirations? Because... I, 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 most of the time, what we eventually comes across is that people aspire for offices, you know, having this idea that they are coming to become masters of their department or the people they are governing or their constituency. They fail to realize that opportunity given to you to serve in an executive position, okay, uh, through an election and all of that is an opportunity to put the people first and you know dispense governance on behalf of the people it's a privileged opportunity you know that must look at the needs of the people and so far honestly i probably think that we can only count a handful of persons who probably understand this so i think it's time we didn't start questioning people who want to aspire because when we talk about performance I mean, it, it's, it's not, it's, it doesn't matter whether you've been in government before or whether you're in your private sector. Even when you're in, your private, you know, in the private sector, you know, as a private person, what have you done? 
In what way have you been involved in any public oriented programs? In, not, in what way have you championed the cause of a people to say this is not your own personal thing, but you are fighting for the interest of the people? These are issues that matter. But a lot of these guys, they just come on because some political godfather somewhere anointed them. Okay, and they understand that when they come to that office, there are certain percentage of the of the people's patrimony they will pay to that political uh, godfather as homage, and every other thing they can do as they will. I think this is very important, which is why for me right now, I have not seen anybody that has been in the corridors of powers whose name I've heard flying around right now to aspire for governor of Industry 24. I have not really seen anyone really that I can say this one is worthy of my, my support. Let me speak for myself first and foremost. I have not. And I think this is something that we must take very seriously because we can thank see you. the impact of governance in the life of the people. Yeah, thank, thank you so much, viewers of the Comrade Show, friends of the Comrade Show, especially those from Edo State. We are just trying to lay a foundation on what we should look at for who becomes governor of Edo State in 2024. We've looked at performance to say that whatever you've done, you must have performed. Especially for politicians who have had positions before, they must show us their report card. Something else again, another block. We have about six blocks we're just going to go through. I, I want to coin this as age and youthfulness. I think it's very important. Some people will argue that President Joe Biden is almost 80. If he wins the second term, he will be over 80 or something. That is fine. That is the United States. We have system work. In Nigeria, we need somebody that is dynamic. So age is very important because we don't have systems in place. Age, youthfulness. Comrade Lamte, what are your ideas? What are your thoughts? I think this is very important. We need somebody that is young, youthful at heart. Wait, 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 wait. There's no, there, there is no gain saying that far that, you know, uh, you know, age is very important. It's important to me. It's key to me because uh, right, right now, the embarrassment that we are being caused as a people, particularly now, that honestly, you mentioned uh, uh, President Joe, Joe Biden just now. I honestly think that Americans should not give him the chance to run again. You understand know what I'm saying? Uh, because I, well, that, I, would be, that, that, that would be the issue for another day and for the Americans it, anyway. It would, it would be. It is because I want to zero into what's his name, uh, you know, President, uh, President Tunubu. We already saw, saw with uh, former President, uh, what's it called, uh, Buhari and all of that. Tonobu was, I don't know what it was in France the last time, and all of that. He was meeting with France president and, of course, the European Union, you know, president and every other thing. I, I couldn't just understand. The first, first president came, you know, to that part, uh, red carpet alone. The European uh, 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 Union president came alone. They were not guided. But Kinubu was being guided, held by somebody. And yet his own, his own ADC was with him. A bodyguard, whether a bodyguard or a stabilizer, was standing by him. Comrade, comrade, I must say that I commend you. You are very observant. I thought as well. Yeah, I yes, yes. I, it, 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 I felt very embarrassed. So the, the man who is was the one that is, I will call him a stabilizer or you know standing by him was was scared to leave him to walk alone. Honestly, that's that's embarrassing. Now again, in the age of are right now, my brother. Okay, you can hardly see people in their 60s or 70s that we will say they are compliant with the time that we are in right now. This is an age where IT has taken over, where so much of, you know, so so, so much knowledge in technology is taking over. And you can actually only find young people, you know, compliant with the age that we are in right now. Other people are not. They depend on others to tell them what is happening or to do things for them. Under, under President Mahmoudou Buhari, somebody was telling me the other day that man, of the trillions missing under NPC, President Mahmoudou Buhari didn't even know. No, he wasn't aware. He wasn't aware. And yet he was directly in charge of what was happening there. Because those who know the IT, okay, that he doesn't understand, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would be surprised if Buhari could even open his email. We'll just bamboozle him. You know, do away with whatever they want to do. So, Age, youthfulness is very, very, very important this time. But, but, and again, I mean, we've had a state over the years, it's always been analog brains, you know, except in recent time that we have uh, somebody like, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, 
uh, Governor Godwin of Basaki, whom you can reasonably say that this man is compliant with the time because he's actually from that background. So we need people, even though they are not IT trained, okay, but they, they are very conscious of it. They understand the time. They know they are compliant with the time. They know the time that we are in right now. And of course, you know, uh, they can easily adapt to whatever shades as it were. So I think that's, yeah. that's a, it, it would be a, a very important criteria. Very, very yeah. important. Thank, thank you so much, Kamilamte. I think age, youthfulness is very important. It's got nothing to do with health. But we need somebody that's a bit very dynamic. I would go a bit further to say I don't know the exact age of Governor Gordon of Baseki, but it's I think he's in his fifties. Yes, but but I think the next governor should should not be older than Governor Godwin or Baseki, in my view. There is so much work to be done in the those states, and that work must continue by being savvy. And you married it very well. Somebody that is current with age at the moment. So at those state people, Nigerians and those that work this later. We are trying to lay a foundation for who the next governor should be and the credentials that they should carry to the table. We've looked at performance, even the work in, in their previous job. We've looked at youthfulness and age. And we think that with this current time, it's very important that we consider that very well. Another very important block I want to look at is, I may call it ethnicity or language, but better still, let's put it senatorial district. There have been lots of issues, like you know, those state has three senatorial districts. We have the north, the, uh, the south, central, and the north. And uh, over time, governorship aspirants or governors have always flown among these three. Mm -hmm. And uh, many people have been talking of the Edo agenda or the Bini agenda. There is the ESA agenda. There's even the, uh, there's no northern agenda at this moment, but there seems to be like an ESA agenda. And I think it's very important that we know and we talk about this, that this will play a very pivotal role in who becomes the next governor. Like I said, I'm from Edo State. If you were going to ask me, based on language, I think Edo State has got five senatorial districts in some sense. Many people don't know. The entire South is made up of Beninese. They speak Bini language, you know, quite almost all of them can understand each other. When you go to the central, it's purely Isha language, although there are a few differences, but they can understand each other. But I want to educate Edo State people today. When you go to the north, the north is very diphysical and very different. Because within the north, you have three major groups. You have the um, Akoko Edo, which you talk of um, the Igara. You, you have uh, uh, Esako, you remember Aochi. I talk of Onwa. Yeah, you remember Otuo and indeed Afuze. And they all speak different languages. So to be frank, that part of the north sometimes appears to be somewhat marginalized. But that will be a story for another day. But Kamei Lamte, what is your take? I know you've, you've spoken about this before, but there are so many agendas on the card. We have the Edo State, the, the Edo Bine agenda. There's the Esa agenda. I think there's Aochi as the agenda. I don't know if there's an Akoko Edo agenda and maybe an Onwa agenda at this moment. But all these agendas are very important because where the, the, the place that the next governor comes from is very pivotal. I want you to um, say something about this as we lay it as a third barometer for who becomes the governor of Edo State come 2024. Um, first, I'd like to say that um, I've spoken about this a few times. And I've, I've actually had to make the case for an Eastern person to become governor. And I have, in recent time, I've been very careful now, you know, um, to engage in this discourse. And I'll tell you why. Firstly, I'd like to say that it is sad. It is it's just because of our antecedents and where we are, where we find ourselves, that this issue of, you know, Uselo agenda, Uba agenda, the other agenda becomes a matter of discourse in our politics. The reason is because we have always had failed administrations. And so therefore, what becomes a matter of importance is who becomes what. And so, just like uh, you know, uh, uh, this professor did put it once, that in the midst of all of the political thieves that we have, it becomes very key for one man somewhere to feel satisfied that his own person is a president. Whether he performs or not, it doesn't really matter. Okay, 
And when you say this person has stolen and he needs to be stoned, uh, his classmate will tell you, uh, please don't stone him. We know he's a thief, but he's our thief. You have had your own thief and all of that. Because if our own political antecedents has always been a bad performance, okay, it would not matter where you know a governor comes from or where a local government chairman comes from or where a president comes from. If, for instance, we have had presidents of the Northern Extraction, okay, performing and turning Nigeria to become the Dubai of Africa, the London of Africa, and making Nigeria work, I am sure nobody would bother to say the next president must become an Igbo person or must become this or must become that. If a Yoruba person is president and we've had Yoruba presidents perform, you know, creditably, the discussion will never be based on where a president com comes from. And I do, I do remember uh, uh, former President Bush of America and the son and, and the Bush brothers. You know what I'm saying? Uh, one of them is from Texas. And that one is from another state. I don't know why you understand the picture of what I'm saying now. Uh. Yeah, so you. The discussion has never been about where an American president comes from or a government comes from. You understand? I, mean, I live in the UK right now. I try to look at the, the prime ministers that we have had in the UK. The debate about who becomes a leader of the leader of labor, the Labour Party or the Conservative is never about where the individual is from. Today we have an Indian person as the prime minister of the UK because he is the, the leader of the Conservative. People rise to the ranks and every other thing. It is never about this. And so that is what makes it really, really sad. However, however, again, another sadness to it even in recent time is that nobody right now can really lay claim to defend any position right now. The reason is because from what we already know, and I will start with the demography, the Edo State demography, okay? We have the Edo North, the Edo South, and the Edo, Edo Central. Officially, Edo North and the Edo South combined is not up to the population of Edo South, which means that the Edo South will always determine who becomes governor of Edo State. If somebody from Edo North becomes governor of Edo State today, it cannot be if it does not have the support of the Edo South. If someone from a do central become a, do, a, a, a governor of a do state today, he cannot be because if, if he does not have the, the support of the people of a, of a do south. And right now, there's an underground tension building all around in a do state. And I fear that a do state is becoming, or rather, has become a mini Nigeria. And the dynamics is such that. It is almost very dangerous now to stick your neck out for anything. The reason is because we now have three major political parties in those states. The PDP, the APC, and the Labour Party. Somebody like Usagi and Zeya from Edo South contested the last two elections. Very formidable. We hear from Greg Van that he wants to run again under APC. He's an Edo South man. Now, if that is true, you know, if he shows interest at all, it may be very likely that we, we get it because he's close to Mr. President, uh, President uh, 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 Tunubu, who is very interested in what happens in those things in the next elections. Except, of course, something plays out at the tribunal to give the, 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 the mandate to President Obi, incoming President Obi, hopefully. That may quickly change the dynamics again. But if the election is to take place under Tunubu, he has already made it very clear that he's going to be interested in those states and he's going to do everything to get those to APC, which means that we are probably more than likely if Isaiah Yamu is interested again to have Isaiah Yamu run on that APC. Now, it is not too clear who PDP will be projecting, but if APC is showing sense that they are going to project an adult South man, I can almost tell you that PDP may want to match that person by calling President Edo South Man. Of course, we hear from whom that there are a couple of Edo Central persons, including the Deputy Governor, even though it's not official, even this claim, uh, Ag Bagro, that's an, an APC person. Okay, you, mean already, you mean I don't know? You mean I don't know? From a don't know. They're already eyeing to take over from Governor Governor Basaki. 
Don't we do it calling here from Grapevine? Now there's an issue, I don't want to mention his name, but people know him. Okay, that Governor Baseki is probably iron. Though he himself has spoken some circles to say that he's not interested, but we don't know what is going to happen at the level of PDP. Meanwhile, a lot of those that never had their way, they are drawn from APC before to PDP, to APC, to PDP, now suddenly saw labor as an opportunity. Many of them are trooping out to labor. They want to get the ticket on that labor party. The, the tag of non-performance is hanging on the neck of very many of them. Whether they have been in private sector, for those of them that have, you know, you know, uh, 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 you know, represented those states in, in the in the public sector before. So, which means that the Labour Party needs to be very, very watchful about these individuals. I'm sure, based on some influence that some of us have, you know, in the Labour Party, even though you know uh, our romance with some, the, the hierarchy of Labour Party, we are going to insist strongly that some of these human beings that have that are political prostitutes that have moved from APC to PDP, PDP to APC, APC to PDP, and now they want to find their voice on that Labour Party, there should be strong criteria to ensure that they don't have their way. So, my yeah. brother, that, those are the dynamics. At the end of the day, the only way we can say it's going to come from one particular district is if all of the political parties decide to bring, you know, a candidate from one, you know, one a, 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 a constituent, I mean, from one a, a senatorial district. Otherwise, a do south still hold the ace. More than yeah. Thank, thank you so much, Comilante. Nobody can contest your wisdom and your deliberation in that tough. You know it very well. So, Edo people, what we are trying to do today is just put matters on the ground and creating triangles, and if, will I say, more than triangles now, just food too for consideration. And we've considered that senatorial district is very important. That will play a very important role in who become the next governor of Edo State. And Kamilati Bonsa right here has done a very, very important job to that. And um, it's just a little over two minutes, over one hour on the clock. We just want to do this as fast as possible so that we don't um, bore your evening. But we have a few more to talk about. Kamilati, Nigeria is very dynamic with 36 states and the federal capital territory. Yes. Nobody, no state as we speak, has ever had another gender becoming governor. It's all been men. So I think this aspect is also very important. Yeah. As we go forward, I think gender will play a role. It almost happened in Adamawa with all the issues that happened and all the stuff. I don't know if the lady is going to court. But I think a those state with its wisdom, with its sagacity, with its political consciousness, do you think a those state is ready? I think gender is very important. We've had so many males as governors. Would there be an opportunity for a female? I think gender is also very important. What is your thoughts? Um, we have wallowed too much in the same old things. And we've not really seen much of a different result. Uh, the beauty of a those state is that uh, a those state is not a stereotypical state. A those state is a very dynamic, uh, it's a very dynamic state. Uh, a those state understands excellence. A those state understands intellectualism. A those states can read between the lines. I honestly think that uh, if if we if a those state can if we can have a woman that is positioned, okay, that ticks all the boxes. The issue is not going to be about whether man or woman, but a woman who is able to tick all of these boxes that we're talking about, performance, uh, credibility, integrity, and all of those things put together, I, I think at those stage we'll be very open to that. You understand know, what I'm saying? But I think that there are going to be days where, you know, uh, culturally, we, we try to just, uh, you know, uh, uh, put women, you know, uh, at the back seat. You understand? I think the women right now, they can comfortably take the driving seat, you understand, on anything as far as, you know, as those states are concerned. So I, I think, again, we are, we, we are lucky that we are from a those state, a state that is purely advancing, you know, with the time. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, uh, I mean, I remember many years back when, as a man, a family man, if you don't have male children, you know, you are unsettled, 
there's so much pressure on you. I think that has reasonably died down. You know, people right now have two daughters and they want to raise those daughters like, you know, like, you know, one child more than 200. You consider all effort. Back in the day, you know, people have daughters, they have male children, they tell the children, the, 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 the female children to go and sell in the market while they train the male children in school. In this day, it's not like that anymore. People don't bother anymore. Any one God brings, if a, a female child or a male child, they are okay with it. If they want to have two children, three children, they have them and that's it. They lock up and the society doesn't push them against their, you know, against their will anymore. So that is sure of saying, but you're not born Ma Piquet, you're not born Ma Piquet. It's no longer prevalent. That is because in the times that we are in right now, a dose state has greatly advanced beyond those you know you know a uh, cultural you know uh, 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 stereotype that we've had you understand so i honestly think and again another reason why i favor a female government 2024 is this look around this world today okay everywhere there is progress everywhere there is peace okay women are the major drivers now when you look at even the those state diaspora community I mean, the other day I was just taking, trying to, you know, look at some records we have. The role of our women in America, in the UK, in Europe, my brother, <laughs> and those state women, okay, honestly, for what they champion, professionally and otherwise, I honestly tell you that, you know, uh, our women are ready to step in as far as those state is concerned. So it's not really a question of, uh, it must not be, but I think that, if a those state considers giving a woman a chance, and we do have a worthy woman who ticks all of these boxes, become governor of a those state, we probably will make huge progress. Yeah, th thank you so much, Comrade Lamptey. Viewers of the Comrade Show, we are still creating the template and looking at issues that will be very important for 2024. We are considering gender. I haven't established that all the governors from a those state have all been made. It will be a good idea. To look the other way and see if we can, like Osama Mori said, give women a chance. But I must always say, Kamilamte, I would have loved the next governor to be a woman, at least in my time. A uh, uh, state is unique. We are we we are unique because we create many firsts in Nigeria. Yes. Something tells me that a dose state will be that state that will set that record and that history to be the first state in Nigeria that would have a female as a governor. A those, states, a those state is making waves. Only recently, a few days ago, we heard from Lagos State University or Unilag, the best graduating student from the Faculty of Law with a GPA of 5 over 5 is from a those state, a daughter of a those state. So, women are doing well. He has banked about 10 million, 5 million from Governor Samuelu and 5 million from the, um, from the state coffers. I believe by the time it comes, about Governor Basaki, or Governor Gordon Obaseki has issued a statement already. I think there might be some financial reward to follow. So a those state has made many first. I would like a gender balance. I would like in my time that the governor, the next governor of a those state becomes a woman. But I want to say that gender will play a very important role. We are making progress. We just have two more issues to look at. Kamilante Kwamusa Araki. You agree with me that federal government, the way it is in Nigeria, are always interested and play key roles in different states in Nigeria, and they also have to shape who becomes governor. I think that's another issue that we'll consider. By the time we'll be right for a dose state governorship election, the issues in court would have been clear, and we'll know who becomes president. But you agree with me that if um, Tinubu remains our president, He's going to ensure and fight and use the instrument of state to see that um, APC takes the day. And by the grace of God, if Peter Gregory will be, is announced president, it might be different. And from your former, inter from your former uh, comments you made, everybody is running to the Labour Party. So I think the federal government will play a role. Also, in addition, I think the current state governor, whichever way he go, we also carry weight in determining who becomes the next governor of a those state. So this is our fifth, this is our fifth consideration for this evening. Federal government and state level will play a role 
he will become the next governor of Edo State. What is your opinion? Well, first and foremost, let me just quickly state this, you know, and all of that. Um, I am glad that we are from Edo State. Edo State is very unique. It's a very unique state. Edo State is, Edo State appeared to me, uh, I have read, read much about the Roman history. Okay. Um, uh, the, the people of Rome, in, in, I mean, in, in, in the medieval times, they call them the mob, okay? And the mob is Rome. No matter what Caesar says or does, if the mob says no, Caesar will have no option to say no. If the mob says yes, and that is it, you understand what I'm saying? The mob has always been Rome, and you know, in, in, in those times. Today, at those days, people are like the mob. You know, um, they may appear scattered in their opinions on certain issues, but when they eventually yoke together, it does not matter. It does not matter whether we have 100 presidents somewhere that is against the will of the people of Edo State. Edo State will march to that which they actually want to get, and nothing stops them. And that is why, in the time of Governor Basike, you know, the ASEAN came, and when people say Edo not be Lagos, it was people are not just trying to compare Edo State developmentally with Lagos, but they were trying to say that you cannot lord it over the people of Edo State if they are willing. To follow your call. And I think that may happen. That may happen again in course of 2024. The things you have highlighted, they are very significant. Okay. They are all they all have their roles to play. And that is why the dynamism of 2024, that's an off-season election in those state, is so that nothing can be, pre be predetermined right now. Now, some people have argued to say that anybody that the government of those state anoints becomes governor of those state. And I strongly disagree with that. You understand the bishop from because the dynamics of the state is very, very different. You understand? The governor has his own supporters, but if the support base of a state on a general scale is turning against the support of the governor tomorrow, my brother, there's something you can do about it. You understand the bishop from saying now that his governor does not give a free pass to anybody he anoints. Because at the end of the day, even as governor of a state, okay, there are people who sing his praises. And there are those who want to see his head cut off. You understand the picture of what I'm saying and all of that. What we cannot determine is how much of that support you know he has. Now, as for the issue of uh, 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 President uh, uh, Tinubu and all of that, let him deploy. If he is if he is still there, when this is going to be taking place, let him deploy all he, all he wants to deploy. You understand the picture I'm saying now? Uh, whatever is deploying, okay, we only hold sway if the people of a do state are willing to follow that road. If the people of a do state are saying no, they are not following that rule, there's nothing I can stop it. And that is the truth of the matter. So, and, and I can tell you, if Obi today is pronounced the president of Nigeria, okay, he doesn't really need to do anything. I think it will, it will just regovernize the base. Because remember what happened? After the 25th February ele for presidential elections, that was, you know, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Mahmoud. You know, in the way it was Mahmoud, the people felt very dejected. Subsequent elections of the state governors and the local government uh, assembly elections and uh, you know and all of that, people refused to come out. The turnout was just next to nothing, and that was why, in some of the states, including our own Edo state, the election was easy to manipulate. You understand? Because there was lack of interest, and so why the manipulators were carrying what they were carrying you know, out, you know, for the PDP in Edo state. You know, and here are a lot of the House of Assembly uh, position right now. They are still very much in court and every other thing and all of that. So it was easy. The, the, that that crowd wasn't there. People lost faith. There are people that have, that have been governized to come out. So I can tell you that if President Peter B is, I, I don't know why I keep calling him president. If Peter B is named president today. You are right. It's president in uh, waiting. Yes. Through the court. You understand the picture of what I'm saying now? Uh, I can tell you that the base again will be will be governance. And when that happens, it does not matter what whatever anybody does. Just know that you know Labour Party will win at those state. Again, it's going to depend seriously. This is another, another part of it. It's going to depend seriously on who and who is coming up for the different political parties. You know what I'm saying? But I don't want out seriously waiting, observant, watching. So the candidates first, very important for each of the political parties, very important. The, the influence of the governments, the will, the influence of, uh, the, uh, of, of, of the federal power, and of course, the will of the people of Edo State. All of these dynamics, they are all at play. 
and uh, we are all part of it. Definitely, we will not stay on the fence. We will be part of it to guide the people to the end. Thank you so much, Comelante. If I leave you, you always say a lot when it comes to politics and the strategies of politics you know very well. But for our viewers, friends of the Comrade Show, those that will listen to us later, we are just trying to create a template for um, who becomes governor of Edo State in 2024. We've looked at five basic and most important ones. There's something very important as well, which is the last one. Edo State, like we said, is a very unique state in Nigeria. Edo State is one state that I think when you go outside of Edo State, every country in the world, there must be one person that is from Edo State that is residing there. And that block is very important. Comrade Lamte, great nations are built by people from outside. A large chunk of our people from Edo State are outside. So the last one we want to look as well is the impact of diaspora community on who becomes the next governor of Edo State. Um, a large number of Edo State people are scattered all over Europe and the North America. And I think they have a formidable role to play. Remember the last election of Governor Gordon of Basaki? Diaspora played a very huge role. One would also argue that even though Governor Gordon of Basaki has not recognized diaspora in the role they play, we think in the Comrade Show that diaspora position and impact will be very important. And that's the last issue or blog that we are looking at today. Komilante, you have been a strong force for the diaspora. You have played a very important role in shaping and state politics from the diaspora. Many people like you have done so well. Nigerians and uh, state people are doing so well across the globe. I think it will also be good, like I wish, that we have a governor as a woman. It will be good in my time if somebody from the diaspora becomes governor of Edo State. Comrade Lamte, this is a very important factor. Will it be possible? What do you think? Well, uh, our politics is very local. Okay, I, That the person must be from, a, from diaspora may not be so much my take. Because at the end of the day, even if you are from the diaspora, you must go and localize yourself and build from there. Governor Basak himself is from diaspora. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, he did a lot of work there. A lot of his background was from the diaspora and all of that. But the, 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 the point I want to align with is that the influence of the Edo State diaspora community cannot be emphasized. That Governor Basaki won his second term is largely due to the response of the Edo State diaspora community. The reason is because um, in my own family, as somebody in the diaspora, I hold a lot of influence. In your family, you do. Because there are a lot of people who are looking up to you and they, they believe that you are in a better environment. You, you have better assessment of a lot of things. And so therefore, uh, you can easily tell them that this is what you think is right. And many of them will easily follow that wish. And you can equally even motivate them further. You understand what I'm saying? And all of that. And a lot of this happened when Governor Basaki was contesting for his second term. Uh, many of us governance diaspora a lot. We, we, we made huge contact with a lot of people in the diaspora and all of that. So the diaspora community, they are a more conscious block than even the adjusted uh, people at home. Sometimes, you know, my, my own family members tell me that so a lot of things happen in Nigeria that they don't even get to know until I'm talking about some of those things. You know, that, that I'm even more present with activities in Nigeria than even they themselves at home. The reason is because I have, I have steady electricity to follow and monitor what is happening, watch all the news I want to watch and everything. In their own case, they don't. You understand the picture I'm saying? Uh, so there are a lot of factors militating against the people of those states, you know, following very, you know, uh, 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 close. No, just in the entire Nigeria, really. The entire Nigeria. But I think we are zeroing really on the two states right now. So the adult diaspora community matter a lot in determining what happens next. But again, another way, why, reason why we align with probably somebody from the diaspora, when there's someone from, from diaspora, would be because it's the people can forge some level of trust. I have some grasp with the current government of Edo State. Not for what Edo State government is doing Edo State currently, based on their efforts to govern Edo State, but for the promises the government made to make the Edo State diaspora community by voter to progress in Edo State under the current administration. 
and they failed and remissed in that. For me, it was a huge letdown. It was a huge betrayal of trust. And it, it caught someone like me off guard because, you know, when the government made these promises to give a huge chance to the diaspora, diaspora community to be part of governance, not, really, not necessarily as commissioners or as this or as that, but the government promised to set up the Edo State Diaspora Agency. As a matter of fact, I am aware and I'm part of the process of a Edo State Diaspora, you know, you know, a, a committee, set, a study committee set up to draw a draft for the Edo State Diaspora Agency. People from the diaspora, Edo State diaspora, diaspora community in America, in the UK, you know, and all of that, they were in that study committee with some people in Edo State. They worked day and night, you know, as with burning candles, you know, had sleepless nights, worked tirelessly, templates. created templates to have a workable adjusted diaspora agency. That was done under the tutelage of His Excellency the Governor of those States. Don't dust it, take it to the, to the House of Assembly, debate it you know, fine-tuned, passed into law, and for whatever reason, as we speak, that agency has not seen the light of day. Now, there were a number of people who reached me personally, and a lot of other people across, who wanted to come and invest in a those state, but they wanted some sort of government, you know, protection, to be sure. And we felt that a diaspora agency as such should be able to guarantee some sort of things like that and every other thing. You understand what I'm saying now? And this is why when you said just now that the no nation can actually develop without the influence of our diaspora community. Okay? You know, we thought that shortly after the governor was inauguration and the government was running, they will, you know, make sure diaspora agency is running irrespective of who is the DG or whatever, but that this will be an agency that the Edo State Diaspora community, okay, will definitely refer to on a regular basis, to, you know, to transform whatever they are bringing, trans, you know, transform them to what becomes practicable on the ground, you understand, know, for the progress generally of Edo State people. There are people, okay, who today from the diaspora, okay, are part of, part of that. In my own matter, you know, we are the ones basically, you know, uh, remodeling my own old secondary school right now. You know what I'm saying now? Uh, people from Egosa, for instance, they are doing the same from a dog baller, you know? What's that boy? Like coming to, yeah, old boys have been coming together. Though. So my thought was that all of this should be channeled to diaspora community so that at the end of the day, a state government will be overseeing all of what is coming to a state to diaspora community, whether it's in investment, it's in contribution, it's in whatever. And those things that the community was hugely governized. We pushed that narrative, but for whatever reason, you know, that document is lying there. There is no diaspora community, even when there's the recognition of the role of diaspora community to the election of the governor of those states. I thought that that was a very low air, irrespective of every other thing or performance that can be accredited to the governor of those states, but in this area. But Commandante, you were dwelling more on uh, on um, not having recognition by diaspora in the last government. What is the impact of diaspora now in 2024? Two minutes, please. Now, now for me, for me, I think that you know it will be a huge criteria for me. Anybody that must earn my support must guarantee the role of the adopted uh, diaspora committee. Because at the end of the day, there isn't much you would do as a governor if you do not maximize the potentials of the adjusted diaspora community. My brother, I mean, if you even look at the remittance of adjusted diaspora to a those state alone, you will understand that government, a those state government is not doing anything because the resources of a those state is what is coming from the diaspora. That is the resource plans. Look at the hardship right now across the states. It is not a those, how many people are those government as employed? They are paying for 40,000 as minimum wage. How many people are employed in the civil service? But there are people who are not in the civil service who are living and living okay because of the remittances coming 
from the diaspora. So at that time, I mean, it was a point that we even we have even suggested that we we, we have saw the idea that at those state government we have you know a coffer you know made for diaspora remittances. We want to have a pure database of a those state community in the diaspora where people we have we will be, be card carrying members of a those state as indigenous. Okay. A dusted indigenous, whether from beneath, from uh, O2, or from whatever, and all of that, and they will pay their dues as a those citizens living in diaspora to the Edo state government. And that money will be available, okay, to do this in Edo state. So I honestly think that one of the criteria for me to support anybody this time should be somebody who understands these dynamics and who understands the importance of it. You understand what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, what we want is the presence of Edo state. As I speak with you right now, I probably believe that God has done it for me reasonably that hunger, what I will eat today or tomorrow, is probably not my problem. But the issue is that my satisfaction as a human being, honestly, today is how much I'm able to impact the next man and how much we are able to influence people who can impact our society. That, for me right now, is the biggest satisfaction. If I'm not getting that, no matter how much I eat, no matter what I eat, I am not satisfied. And as a human being who is living, we must live for a purpose, and that purpose must have reasonable satisfaction. For me right now, my satisfaction would be, you know, to have somebody elected who would consider, and most every other thing, bringing the entire diaspora structure, okay, to bear as far as the dose is concerned. Believe me, if that is done, and it's done, my, my brother, you know, maximized, believe me, a dose state will govern herself and we live like a nation in Nigeria, not dependent on a location or whatever. Because even as we speak right now, the Nigerian economic structure is already failing. With all of the debt that we are now owing, you know that we need a state that needs to survive almost independently of this Nigerian state. And we can only do that if we maximize the potentials of the adjusted diaspora. And that is very key. Thank you so much, coming up to you. Anytime you talk, I love your passion. Friends and viewers of the Comrade Show, and for those who will listen to this program later, we've been talking about a Do State 2024 governorship elections. Remember, in November 2024, we're going to have a new governor. And we've looked at a lot of things. We've, we've come out with six considerations. We did this two years ago before the emergence of Peter Gregory B. And the Comrade Show, again, in this wisdom, we are doing it again. We have six considerations that we think will be very important for consideration for candidates and person that will be governor of the state come November 2024. And Comrade Latek has dissected all these charters. These considerations again include one performance. Whosoever becomes the next governor of Edo State should be judged by performance, what they've done, either in government or out of government or in their previous role. We've also considered age and youthfulness. Saying that in this age where things are fast, we need somebody with a good age. We don't need geriatric because they must work and work they must. And if they must work, they must be at the right age. And I have also postulated that anybody older than Governor Gordon or Basaki, the present governor, should, in my view, not be a consideration. We've looked at where this person comes from, talking of the three senatorial districts in those states and the huge role they will play. In, in in deciding who becomes the next governor of Edo State. And you agree with me that Kobelate Bausaraki talks usually about it and is open for the South, for the North, and indeed for the Central. We also look at gender. In this age of um, uh, gender balancing and gender affirmation, we also consider that it will, be, it will make sense if Edo State can set, set the record and be the state in Nigeria that will produce the first female governor but we also said that that female governor will not just be female governor it will be female governor that fit all the boxes and take the right boxes and is ready to move a those state to the next level we also looked at another consideration what would be the role of federal government and indeed the state government that the current governor has a role to play it may also determine who becomes the next governor and of course the president of nigeria be it either Peter will be or Tinubu, only time will tell. But we are warning those that this will be a huge consideration. But we're also very quick to say that Edo is very robust and very versatile. I would think even though this will bring some influence, it will matter 
not so much. But you agree with me that it will be a consideration. And of course, too, we think and we know that this is very important because it has been tested a few years ago. We tested it with Governor Godwin of Baseki. And those state people are outside. They live outside of those states. Within the states in Nigeria and some in other parts of the world, in Europe, in North America, everywhere. And we think that the diaspora group will play a very important role in deciding who becomes the governor of those state. So please, let us keep these six blocks. We shall be coming back to talk about them as the time draws nearer. And to encourage those to begin to put your parameters on the table as we prepare for this very important aspect of our political life. At the beginning of the program, we talked about the recent visit by former Minister Clem Agba to the Palace of the Oba of Benin. And you agree with me that that visit, the Oba of Benin, in its wisdom, served Clement Agba very well. And we concluded that if he has any ambition, he should forget about it. Because the issues that were raised and now the Oba presented it to them, uh, presented them to him, were very clear. And there was no response to that. So friends, viewers of the Comrade Show, thank you so much for being part of the program. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a very good weekend. Stay out of trouble and remain focused. God bless all of us, cacabolically. Comrade Show, way. Comrade Lamte Oriente. This is the Comrade Show.